Good morning everybody. Today I am not in the Lake District. I'm actually at Ribblehead in the Yorkshire Dales and I'm here just checking out the lie of the land ahead of a workshop that I'm co-hosting with James Burns at the weekend. As you can see we've actually had an awful lot of snow around here so I'm just coming here on location just to double check everything make sure that there are absolutely no problems and while I'm here I thought I might take this opportunity to show you around now generally I like my videos to have mass appeal but really this video is targeted at just four people and those are Robin, Mike, Brian and Gareth and those are the four guys that are joining James and I for our workshop. This workshop is actually going to be split into two locations and we're going to start here at the Ribblehead Viaduct. We're going to meet at 8 o'clock in the morning at the Ribblehead Viaduct car park before heading off in that general direction to photograph the viaduct itself. When we're done there, we're then going to go down the road and park up at a second location to go and photograph one of the fantastic limestone pavements that this area is particularly famous for. Now usually when we run these workshops we're on my home patch and I actually take a very active role in choosing the, the location and the compositions but on this occasion this is actually James's territory so he's going to be leading the workshop and I will be assisting him and so this morning I'm just coming here get a little bit of the lie of the land and try a few shots for myself. There's a really nice track that leads down from the main road to the viaduct and I've stopped here to get my first shot and it's a really really simple shot. I've got the view of the viaduct and I've got the snowy hills behind it and I'm just using the track as a very basic lead-in line to draw the eye up towards the scene in the distance. It's not a particularly good angle for the viaduct what you want to be able to do for something like this is to be able to see through the gaps, see the landscape beyond it but from this angle you can only really see through the gaps on the left hand side but anyway it's a simple shot and it's something to get me started this morning It is absolutely freezing here this morning as you can probably tell. I've actually already had to change the battery on my video camera. So guys if you're coming on this workshop remember to bring lots of spare batteries and lots of warm clothes. Another thing worth bearing in mind if you're coming on this workshop is this isn't just some random track, this is actually a road with cars on it so we need to be very very careful. Now although I haven't shot here many times before and I don't know the area particularly well, I did actually travel through here on a regular basis to see the viaduct is actually, if you didn't know this, a railway viaduct. And there is an active line on there, it's the Carlisle to Settle line. And I used to catch the train from Kirby Stephen into Leeds where the company that I used to work for, Sky, had an office and I used to spend quite a lot of time there. So I've travelled through this landscape on many an occasion. So it's actually nice to, once in a while to get out and actually photograph it. Now, I've got a friend of mine joining me in May and he's coming in from Canada, flying into Leeds Bradford and he's then gonna get the train this way towards Kirby Stephen. So Mark, this is what you're gonna be seeing, mate, as you go past. Hopefully in May, it won't be quite so snowy.
Now that I've come a little bit further around the track, I can actually get a better view through the archways of the viaduct. And so I just want to take another shot very similar to the one I started with. We're using the road as a leading line, leading the eye up to the viaduct. Really, really simple. I'm actually getting a bit lower this time to try and make more of the track. It's not a particularly interesting track. It's kind of gravelly and kind of bits of rock and stuff like that. Not particularly interesting, but you know, I think this shot kind of works. The viaduct is a really, really impressive structure, but it's not until you get close to it that you get that sense of scale. It is absolutely huge. Now, I don't know how tall it is, but I'm six foot five. So how tall do you think it is? Now I've got a couple of shots already and they're okay, you know, something to get me started, but they're not very creative. So I'm gonna head off now and see if I can find something else. I've come up onto this small patch of higher ground and up here there is some beautiful limestone and I'm using that as foreground interest to lead the eye up to the viaduct in the distance. And now I'm shooting really wide I'm actually shooting at the full extremity, 16 mil of my wide angle lens. And that's making the viaduct very, very small in the frame. But because it's such a strong feature, because it's such a uniform shape, and it contrasts so nicely against the white of the hills behind it, it's still very, very obvious in the frame. And the light out here is lovely, but it's also really, really windy. And so I'm struggling. These microphones on these little cameras are not very good. So if the sound is cutting in and out, I apologize for that. But I'm gonna grab this shot now, and then I'm gonna head back to the car, and we're gonna move on to our second location. I'm on the way back to the car now and I thought I'd just stop beside these rocks here and get a bit of shelter and that's because I want to share with some of the guys that are coming on the workshop a few local phrases to help them communicate with the locals. Now, if you're from the south like me, if you want to express surprise, you might say something like, by Jove, but here you have to say, e bar gumlad. And if you're in a shop and you're getting ready to pay for something, rather than just going, there you go. You have to say, ow bloody much. And the correct pronunciations are Canon, Nikon and Telephoto. So this is our second location that we've chosen for the workshop. It's in an area called Ingleborough Nature Reserve. And as you can see, conditions here are even worse than they were down at the viaduct and I'm actually having to shelter from the worst of the wind and the snow up against this wall here. Now I did find a composition, it's quite nice, uh, I had a tree that was kind of swept over by the wind and then a little bit of limestone pavement in the foreground so that's quite a nice composition. I've been shooting with my wide angle lens so guys if you're coming on this workshop try and bring as wide an angle lens as you've got to make the most of those big foregrounds that we've got here. As you can see, I'm now back at the car. I actually walked all the way around the area where James and I are planning to bring the group. And I think it's perhaps a little bit too dangerous. I need to talk to James, and perhaps we may need to come up with a plan B. But the problem we've got is it's very snowy. There's lots of snow everywhere. And this is an area famous for limestone pavements. And you can't really see where you're putting your feet, and that is a recipe for a broken ankle. So we may need to have a think, and I may need to have to come back again to double check conditions 
before the workshop. So this is being recorded on the Friday, eight days before the workshop goes ahead. I may need to come back on the Thursday, two days before, can't come back on the Friday, I have another client just to check. And I don't really want to do that if I can avoid it because the cost of that will incur in my time in diesel will mean that I'm practically doing the workshop itself for free. Before I go, I should just mention briefly something about conditions on workshops. Now, James and I would never ask anybody to shoot in conditions that we ourselves wouldn't shoot in. And for me, that's absolutely fine. The mirror is breath of wind, the mirror is hint of moisture in the atmosphere, and I'm in the pub. But you know James, James will shoot in anything. But that's it for me today. I'm now gonna head home, give James a call, and see if we can't come up with a plan B for next Saturday.